All right guys, I just got back from the testing center and I did not pass. This is the first AAC test that I, not, that I didn't pass on the first time. And I kind of knew that. And the reason why is because while I was studying, the topics were quite broad and I really didn't know where to focus on. I did get the AAC practice test as well. And essentially for me, having taken the test and failed it, I think is the number one step to passing it. Now I'm gonna prevent you guys from having to take it twice because I wanna communicate the areas you guys should be studying. If somebody told me, hey, this is what you actually need to study and understand, I could have approached the test a little bit different. But since that direction wasn't given, I had to learn it by failing. All right, well, first off, you need to learn about the composite vehicle. Now you're probably thinking, what is that? So when you take the L1 test, you're gonna be, well, they gave me a physical booklet. And within that booklet, they had AC's made up car. And what I mean by made up car is they took an imaginary car that they're saying composite vehicle, and they're telling you all the specific systems and how they work. They're telling you what kind of ignition system it has, what type of fuel system it has, how many O2 sensors it has, what type of variable timing it has, uh, how the uh, immobilizer system works. So it, that composite vehicle pretty much is what you're gonna be tested on. And uh, not all questions, but a lot of those questions are gonna be based on that made up vehicle, AKA the composite vehicle. Now, one of the things I noticed is that this study guide, the Delmar study guide, uh, has a composite vehicle. And I know I'm assuming Motor H might have theirs, but I'm personally gonna say that you should take the composite vehicle description or the actual composite vehicle uh, straight from AAC. And the way you could do that, and I'm not sponsored, is by buying an AAC practice test. I think it's like nine bucks or whatever. But I did buy the practice test for the L1. And when I was doing the practice test, they offered you the composite vehicle and you could look through it. It was a PDF file and you could scan through it. I think that's really good so you could understand how to look at the composite vehicle and what it's made up of and what it consists of. Now, I can't clearly remember if they were identical, but pretty much they were when it came to the composite vehicles like uh, uh, makeups. When I was taking the test, they did provide me with a, a, a composite vehicle booklet and it's a 2016 revised version. So I'm not sure what they're providing you in the practice question one. But, so going back to the test, remember, I have to follow AEC's regulations and rules about, I can't tell you specifically what they ask you, but I'm gonna tell you generalized areas. So one of the things you need to prepare when you're gonna take the test is you're gonna to have to look at that composite vehicle and hopefully you've already looked at a composite vehicle book or portion of it, like I said. But then after that, you're gonna to have to get really familiar with air to fuel ratios, O2 sensors, and anything that has to do with the emissions. So I'm gonna break it down real quickly what you guys need to look at. So there's this number one video, it's kind of long, it's a little mundane, but he does it the best. And it's gonna talk about the emissions, where it's gonna talk about the hydrocarbons, the uh, CO, which is associated with richness, uh, the O2, and the uh, CO2, which of course your catalytic converter should be making. And you're really gonna wanna get familiar with the acronyms, what they mean, and what happens when one is higher and one is lower. The first link I provide in the description is gonna be associated with that. The second thing you wanna get familiar with is how an O2 sensor works. What type of voltage it is, meaning what's the scale. Uh, if I'm correct, uh, it's from zero to one volt. And you need to know what happens when it has a low voltage and a high voltage. Low voltage meaning lean, high voltage meaning rich. So you're also gonna have to wanna understand how the heater works and what the requirements are for the heater to work and not. Also, you're gonna to wanna to learn about the IM uh, monitors and tests. And essentially what that is, whenever doing, doing emissions and they're testing this, these different systems, you're gonna to have to learn what the requirements are for the test to be completed and what happens when those tests fail or they weren't completed and what could possibly cause those non-complete statuses. Now, I'm not gonna lose you, trust me. We're gonna to try to simplify it a little bit more. Now, you're probably thinking, well, you didn't pass. I didn't pass by three questions, but again, this is one of those tests that I didn't know where to study at. So I really think the information is real crucial for you guys. So another thing you wanna understand is fuel injectors, fuel flow, balance test. You don't wanna go real deep into it, but you wanna do what, you wanna know what they are. You wanna know what the fuel pressure is for the composite vehicle. You, so a good way to reference that is just knowing what the fuel pressure is supposed to be for a regular car. What happens when there's low fuel and when there's high fuel. So you really wanna get familiar with the fuel system. 
Now, some of the things you also want to understand is going back to electrical troubleshooting. You want to actually, actually, and I'm not giving you any information away, but this caught me by surprise. You're going to want to, you're going to, want to understand amperage. Now, that was something that caught me by surprise because usually I'm dealing with volts. But you want to know how amperage is associated to volts and how it's associated to the systems. And also, you're going to want to know how uh, resistors work and what happens when you're testing a circuit with the resistor if it's open or closed. So, in my opinion, understanding volts, resistance, if you're testing a resistor, and amperage. I know it seems like a lot, but you're going to want to get ahead of that. So, again... I'm going to keep going backwards so I don't lose you. Understand a composite vehicle. Understand O2 sensors, how they work, their voltage, and how to troubleshoot them. Also understanding what their voltage means and also how that's connected to the emissions. So everything's real connected. The emissions, the O2 sensor, fuel, air. One of the biggest things I read across the board on all the study guides and is pertinent is what happens when you have a too much of a lean system like a vacuum leak or something like that and you want to know what causes a lean system now understanding all those dtc codes and understanding all those trouble codes you're not gonna you're definitely gonna want to know what they mean but the most important thing is you want to know what causes them and that's kind of one of the things that they're talking about is advanced you want to know what's how to troubleshoot and diagnose an engine now after you've done all that you the composite vehicle there's gonna be questions related to the composite vehicle and also questions that are not related to it. But the main thing you want to really understand is what happens inside that cylinder and how to backtrack from it. Like what happens if you have a leaking injector? What happens if you have a fuel regulator that is uh, the diagrams ruptured or the vacuum hose is pulled off? A lot of these things are associated to fuel. So the best thing you could do in my opinion is go through the uh, practice uh, study guide, but this time around, that's not gonna be enough. Uh, go to YouTube videos that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna attach, but this time, that's not gonna be enough either. I'm gonna recommend that you read the AAC's practice test complete, complete composite book first, before you take the study guide, before you take the practice test, read that composite book first. It's gonna make the biggest difference ever. Read it from the beginning to the end, take notes. And then after you start uh, taking your, your practice test, it's all gonna start making sense. You're gonna get caught up uh, with lean issues and rich issues, but after a while, it's all gonna make sense as far as what the test is trying to approach. Now, the reason why this was a little harder for me is I think, um, I think since they're going advanced, I think the circuit and the electrical troubleshooting was a step above than the electrical AAC test, the original one. I think that they really want you to understand electrical troubleshooting really well. Um, there wasn't a lot of like scan data for in the practice test, and I can't tell you in the AAC uh, test itself, but just in general, you know, like uh, uh, scan tools, you just kind of want to know what camshaft, camshaft sensors and crankshaft sensors, what they are. So like a crankshaft sensor puts out uh, uh, AC voltage, right? It doesn't do DC voltage. You also wanna know what kind of wave pattern it has. You also wanna understand what happens with the camshaft position sensor, what, how it works, what type of voltage it has, its reference voltage. What happens when it doesn't work? What does it refer to if it doesn't work? Well, it refers to retarded timing versus advanced timing. So essentially, if you've been working on cars, if you've been in the industry and you've been doing troubleshooting, engine troubleshooting, you're going to be ahead of the game. I think the test is very fair, but I think where I didn't do right was I didn't read all the composite vehicles information. And then not only that, I really got a little bit hung up on some of the troubleshooting as far as what happens when the system is lean. Like versus rich, but what could it be? Because sometimes all the questions across the board, and I'm not giving like direct uh, hints to a certain question, but I believe AC really approaches it where, where like sometimes there's two answers that could really be um, the right answer. So you, knowing the system is, uh, is gonna be key as far as the fuel system and the air system and the emission systems. So I hope this video helps you out. Uh, this is going to be part one of part two. Part two, uh, once I pass it, I'm going to try to develop an even better plan. 
But I hope that the biggest thing you got out of this video was read the composite book from the AAC practice test. So go get the AAC practice test. It's like nine bucks for the L1. Read the composite book first, then take the practice test on the uh, AAC on the computer. And then after that, get a study guide and start working on it. Whatever you don't know, I'm gonna attach some YouTube videos, but you really wanna spend some time understanding all the fields in the composite book. How does crankshaft sensors work? Cam shaft sensors work? How does an oxygen sensor work? When does it heat up? What is open loop, closed loop? Uh, how do fuel injectors work? What is pulse width? Uh, what happens when one is leaking? What happens when one is stuck? Uh, what happens when there's carbon deposits? Um, essentially, also one of the main, biggest things I, I skipped over was the EVAP. And I guess because in my opinion, the EVAP system in all of the tests are super easy. But one of the things I would recommend knowing is that the EVAP vent should always be open and you have to command it closed if you're doing the test. And the EVAP solenoid, the purge solenoid should be closed unless you open it or it's open because it met its criteria. But you should know really well what happens if either of those, if the vent stays stuck closed for the for the EVAP system, or if the solenoid is open when it's not. It's gonna, if it's going to cause a rich uh, condition in the engine or a lean condition. You guys got to figure that out. So essentially, the EVAP system is pretty cool. I'll attach a video to that. But I hope you guys really uh, uh, follow those steps and wait for part two. I got to wait 30 days before I, I make the next video. But till then, I'm gonna make part two, which is gonna give additional information for you guys to pass. And, uh, and again, I've had countless of comments and emails of people who have used my videos to pass and uh, they've been successful on it. And the biggest compliment I could say is if you just like the video, share it and subscribe, I appreciate that. All right guys, you take care and we will see you soon.